what's good y'all it's your girl jada simone and i am back once again with another video it has been a long time it's been about a year since i last uploaded but i finally think that i know which direction i want this channel to go and what i want the content of this channel to consist of <laughs> excuse the clothes it is 8 30 right now and it's bedtime it's you know it's winding down it's dark out and um i have to work so you know i just wanted to film this video and eventually go to sleep hopefully you are as comfortable as i am while watching this video as you can see by the title i will be speaking on seven reasons why you should grow closer to god now there are so many so 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 many reasons why you should grow closer to god that i can't even think of or i can't name even some of the wisest people you know may not even be able to name all the reasons why you should get closer to god but today i am just going to talk about seven reasons um why you should and i will back it up with some scripture now i am no theologian or certified preacher or anything like that but i am qualified to spread the word of god so if you don't mind please subscribe to this channel give this video a thumbs up comment turn on those notification bells so you can get a notification every single time i post and let's get this video out in the algorithm we want to get more younger women and younger men too to grow with god and to um increase their spirituality and their love for god ultimately so that way we can win souls over to christ and be able to minister to god's people more things that you all want to know or hear or understand or just have an example of we can be helpers of one another it'll help me increase my knowledge of my walk with christ and as well as encourage you and inspire you there are many reasons as i stated before but i will be listing seven on today now this video won't be extremely long and i do want to upload um, another video on how you can get closer with god so it'll be more in depth on things that you can do but today we're just going to focus on why you should get closer with god if you want it you can have it if you need it you can have it Somebody shout, yeah. if you want it you can have it guide you and he will help you so the word of the lord says as i was with moses so shall i be with you and that is found in joshua 3 verse 7 and psalms 121 verse 1 through 3 i also have my bible here so i'm just going to use that so excuse me if it does take me just a minute to find these scriptures uh there's a lot going on here i'm recording on my phone i've got my laptop out and um, I'm also using my Bible to reference these scriptures. So Psalms 121 verse 1 through 3 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Now this is David talking and we know David. David is a very famous Bible character who was a musician and he was described as a man after God's own heart. He is using this song explaining that uh, he will lift up his eyes to the hills from what's coming his help. Now I'm not going to go into depth about these scriptures but please take the time to read these scriptures for yourselves. This is why one of the reasons why I wanted to include these scriptures in here because hopefully through this video you know uh, God pricking your heart or just the desire the Holy Spirit just coming to you to read the word for yourself that is ultimately the goal because there's nothing better than reading the word for yourself to understand 
God's plan for your life to understand God more and to be able to hear his voice more clearly. Psalm 32 verse 8, we're going to go flip over there real quick. And it says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Now, this is one of my favorite scriptures because it gives me such reassurance. It lets me know that God is really, really with me in every decision that I make, no matter how big, no matter how small. It's just an awesome, awesome thing. Um, and as you grow closer with God, it just becomes more prominent in your life and you realize how much he cares okay in hebrews 13 verse 5 through 6 let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have for he has said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may say boldly the lord is my helper and i will not fear what man shall do to do unto me it's amazing how the word is because it's so true and the word also says that his word endures forever and it does because everything just beautifully ties in it's so awesome so last one for this reason proverbs 3 verse 5 so we're gonna head over there real quick trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path if he wants you to trust in him and lean on him and and not think with your own mind and your own understanding obviously there is a better way to think better way to go about what you want for yourself and uh what better way than the lord who promises um to guide us and be there for us Okay, so now we're going to go to reason number two. You will have no reason to fear. I go to Psalms 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now that is one of the staple scriptures. That is something that you hear, even unbelievers may have heard before. Um... And that scripture is so self-explanatory. Now we're going to go to Psalms 138, verse 7. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. All right, now we're going to go to reason number three. He will give you a future and increase your faith. Jeremiah 29 and 11 is one of my favorite scriptures. We're going to just go to that real quick. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and do not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 and 11, those are also one of my favorite scriptures. It just gives you so much reassurance. Um, and then we're going to go to Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. There is also a scripture that he that asks uh, shall find, he that knocks, I, uh, I, I'm going to find that scripture really quick because that's the one that I really want to use for this reasoning all right that is what i wanted to find matthew 7 verse 7 ask and it shall be given to you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you now this doesn't just regard faith but this regards anything that you ask from god and i believe as a christian one of the things that you should definitely ask god is to increase your faith increase your faith increase your faith because without faith it is impossible to please god and all you need is a mustard seed of faith that's all you need uh in order to make things happen to move mountains to change your situation so uh that is reason number three now we're going to go to reason number four you won't be defeated now we are going to go into Matthew 7, verse 24 through 26. Man, this word is so powerful. And um, I just find myself getting so excited. And hopefully you are encouraged by this as much as I am. 
Matthew 7 verse 24. Now Jesus is speaking here. He is speaking to the multitude and he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these things, these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon, his, his house upon the sand. So I'm reading too fast. Um, and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Wow. Now, there is so much just within those few verses about what Jesus is talking about and this makes it even the more powerful because it's in red y'all we know that Jesus is speaking and how powerful is what he said um just using that analogy of someone who builds their house upon a rock and someone who builds their house upon the sand we know that the difference between the two is one is going to last and one won't one is going to endure tough times and the other won't one is going to make it through the storm and the rain and the other won't now, how can we apply that to our lives? We have the Christian, we have the one that follows the word, who hears the word, not not only hears it, but does the word and follows the sayings of God. And, and the other who does not, who chooses to turn their hearts in, away from God and hardens their heart toward God and just follow their flesh and um, live for the world. We see that in the end comes destruction. The, he, he says, great was the fall of it. Great was the fall. It wasn't just a little fall, but great was the fall of it. Wow. All right. So now we are going to go to reason number five. You will keep his commandments through loving him, causing your light to shine and having the fruits of the spirit. So this is a little more in depth one. Um, I'm going to try to speak on this a little bit lightly without going too much in depth because we'll be here for a good minute. First John 5 verse 2 through 3. We're going to go there first. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. When you love someone and when you appreciate them and are thankful for them, you are going to do what you can to show how much you appreciate them. You're going to do what you can to acknowledge them and um allow them to continue to be that person toward you. You wouldn't want to do anything to mess up your relationship. You wouldn't want to do anything to um, damage how you feel about that person or damage how that person feels about you because you want to reap the benefits. You want to not only that, but you want to keep your relationship in good standing because you know that you all can do good things together. You know that you guys can get Jesus. You know that you all can um, succeed together and that that person is your help, your aid, the person you can lean on. Just relate that to your relationship with God. Relate that to someone who oversees everything and knows all. You want to show your love for him. And the way that you can show your love is by keeping his commandments. You wouldn't want to do things that he doesn't want you to do. You don't want to do things that will harm you all's relationship and um, hurt you in the long run. Again, allowing your house to um, fall, just like we talked about in Matthew. Um, to not endure and not last and not be able to stand the test of time and have a testimony of how great the glory of God has been in your life and how visible it is to um, to all. Now, through this, through keeping his commandments, which are listed in the Bible, um, if you don't know them, go back and read them, look it up and read the word for yourself to know what he desires from you, what he wants from you, things that you need to change, correct or work on and things like that. Um, and we're not perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God, but he is merciful. He is loving. He is He is a, 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 a good God. So um, just continue to strive, to strive, to strive um, to uh, please him and to love him and to keep his word. This will cause your light to shine and to have the fruits of the spirit because when you read the word and you see that the fruits of the spirit in Galatians says that it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. These things will be added into your spirit because you will love God enough to strive to do the things that he has allowed for you to have that he has given you through the Holy Spirit. And these things, these fruits of the Spirit will allow your light to shine because a lot of people in the world may not have patience or, or peace or goodness or kindness or the 
faith or gentleness or self-control. We see that in our day-to-day -day lives. Have you noticed people being sh so short-tempered, people being so um, um, impatient and obnoxious and just unloving, unforgiving, things like that? Now, that is an example, but through those fruits of the Spirit, our light will shine. Um, okay. So now we're just going to go to Matthew 5 verse 16 for this reason. And then we're going to head to reason number six. And we are almost through. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Oh, sorry, wrong scripture. But that is a great scripture. But we're going to go to chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in, which is in heaven. Now when your light shines, men will see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven how awesome is that imagine people can see the glory of god through your works because because your light is shining before them i i i'm always thinking this is just a quick little sidebar um shout out to mark the messenger he is um someone that i have um watched more recently and uh his his videos are encouraging um and you know just help me to have that feeling of you know i'm not alone um and that there are people in the world that are striving to um please god and striving to be like christ but he used an analogy um and the analogy is also in the bible regarding the lamp and things like that um and i won't go too much in depth into it but he was kind of just saying like you know in the spiritual realm you know there is something different about you when you are a christian and you grow closer with god people are going to notice that there is something different about you whether that be in the workplace in school um wherever you are people are going to notice that there is something something different about you and uh he kind of used the analogy like you know there's all these dark lamps their lamps are off you know there's darkness and you are the only light in that room so people are going to be looking like hey you know what's up with him like <laughs> what's going on with him and it was just so funny to me because i'm like yeah like you know some people just are attracted to that light some people will try to dim your light or people will uh just for whatever reason just admire you and you won't even realize or know but there's just something different about you and that is the hand of god on your life whether you realize it or not whether you realize it or not that is the hand of god on your life but that other scripture that um we had read blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled that goes hand in hand with um he will give you a future and increase your faith because whatever you ask for whatever whatever you desire from god um if you hunger for for righteousness if you hunger for for um righteousness you shall be filled with that and that is what you will gain while growing closer with god and read matthew chapter 5 um all the way down it just shows blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted when you grow closer with god you will realize the promises that he has called and he has allowed in your life the sixth reason is he will give you strength um we all know the scripture i can do all things through christ who strengthens me now i'm going to find the address of that um in case you want to read it for yourself um we have all heard the scripture before And if you haven't heard the scripture now, you have, and that is Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, with strength, which strengthen, strengtheneth me, strengtheneth me. That is an amazing scripture. I'm not going to go too much into depth with that. Now, we're going to go to Proverbs 121, verse 5. Again, we are speaking on He will give you strength. Um, I'm sorry, it might be Psalms. Psalm 121, verse 5. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. All right, now we're going to go to Psalm 121, verse 6 through 8. Oh, this is so powerful. All of it's all of it's powerful. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Wow. Uh, God in his word reassures us um, what Jesus is. Now we know that Jesus is God just in the human form. 
um, so they are in one, you know, the Trinity. And um, if you would like me to go in depth um, in another video about that, um, the Trinity includes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the Son, Jesus Christ, is who is speaking, and he is saying that um, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So there you go, <laughs> right there. If you were a little bit confused, um, read John 14, verse 9. But um, I just want to give you some scripture on who Jesus is and what he does and, and his connection to the Father and how he gives us strength um, through who he is. John 8, verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. John 10, verse 9, he says, I am the gate. John 10, verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. John 11, verse 25, he, said, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. John 14, verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 15, verse 5, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Because of who he is, we have the strength through Jesus Christ. So the last reason, he will give you peace. Now we all love peace. Peace is something that is just, is one of the most greatest gifts that God can give us. Because although we may endure hard times, Although we may be that house that has been beaten on and has been rained on and has been through the storm, we still stand strong through the peace that God gives us. How awesome is that? You can be going through so many things. You could be going through health issues, mental illnesses. You could be going through um, financial um, situations, hardships. You could be going through academic hardships and things like that. But he will keep you in perfect peace whose eyes are stayed on him. Um, so we're going to go to that scripture <laughs> right now. Um, I got to find the address of that. With peace being one of the fruits of the spirit, um, that is something that will also just show um, through the hard times, really test your um, endurance and really, really grow you as a Christian to depend on God and know that he's going to work everything out for your good. Um, just like we know Romans 8 verse 28, um, all things are worked together for the good of those that love the Lord. Now we're going to go to Isaiah 26 verse 3. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Now when you have a relationship with God and you have been growing with him, you're going to trust him. You're going to learn to hear his voice. You're going to learn about him. You're going to learn how to keep your mind stayed on him um, and through that, he will keep you in perfect peace. Amen, 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 amen. All right, now the last scripture for this reasoning, we're going to go to Matthew 6, verse 34, and I will be out your way. Take therefore no thought for, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Oh, his word is so true. Now, um, I was a little stuttering a little bit because King James be giving it to us. You know what I'm saying? Um, some other versions and just, you know, for some advice or just for some recommendations or suggestions. Um, there are many, many, many versions of the Bible. Um, and I would say that some of my top favorites are the NIV, the Message Translation, the NLT version. Um, those are my top because it really breaks it down and allows you to understand more without the thou's and the thee's. Sometimes it can get a little bit confusing and hard to understand, but um, the original version is the King James. Um, however, um, the other versions are a lot easier to understand. They're easy to access. Just download the Bible app. Um, it's sponsored, but um, I'll leave the link down below. Um, you can download that app to get started with plans and ways to just increase your um, knowledge on the Word of God. Don't don't worry about tomorrow. Just focus on today. Today has enough trouble on its own. Listen, guys, we are constantly, constantly in a spiritual, spiritual battle. And the only way to fight is with the Word of God. Now, um, every day, every day the enemy is attacking. Every day the enemy is going to try to um, steer you away from God for you not to trust God for you to go to your own vices and um, think for yourself and turn to um, negativity and the things that the devil wants you to get engaged in and to be distracted by foolishness like drugs and sex and money and things that are of the devil. We know that God is a good God. He is a keeper. He is a promise keeper. He's a way maker. And every day is a battle, but we can lean on God and he will keep us in perfect peace. 
while doing so. He will keep us in perfect peace every single day. Just take every step day by day. There's nothing wrong with planning ahead. There's nothing wrong with expecting. But there's also the need to focus on the, the, the daily tasks of your life to prioritize those. Um, I've heard it said that the Lord, um, to the Lord, one day is like a thousand years and um, a thousand years is like a day to God. He is not limited by time. And I do want to find that scripture, scripture. Okay, so that's Second Peter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. How powerful. I gave you guys some good gems on today. And if you are able to receive the word and as if this word has pricked your heart, and if you are able to have a little bit more understanding of, of God's word and have the desire, please, please, please indulge in the word of God. Do it for me. Do it for yourself. Do it for God. Oh, that's a nice little line, a little catchphrase. Ultimately, do it for God and do it for yourself. Um, but uh, I hope that I said something to encourage you and to hopefully grow your faith. Like I said at the beginning of this video, feel free to leave some suggestions. You can feel free to email me, inbox me on Instagram or Facebook, and I will be sure to get back to you. So um, that way I can just come up with some more ideas on things that you guys may want to know. Sorry if this video felt a little bit rushed or just uh, rushed through. I tried to do my best to hit everything that I wanted to speak about on today. It is getting a little bit late and uh, I also don't want this video to be super, super long. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let the peace of God be with you. Be blessed. Bye. Jada Simo out. Stay tuned for my next video on how to grow closer with God. Oh,